Hello everyone. We are very glad to be here today. Let's get started our presentation today. The title is Cattle No Pets, but don't delay it until you investigate it. Let us introduce ourselves first. My name is Masaki Kimura. I have been contributing to OSS community as a developer. Uh, my area of concern are Kubernetes, storage, and reliability. I'm one of the main developers of RavRock volume and CSI feature, and I've designed and implemented prototype of cross namespace volume data source feature, which became alpha in this year. And my name is Keisuke Saito. I have contributed to developing infrastructure. <clears throat> and my hobby is fishing, show, as shown on the right picture. <clears throat> Recently, I have uh, engaged in providing open shift managed services to enterprise customers. And improving the function or machine scaling. Here are the contents of our presenta presentation today. I will first talk about background and issue. Then Masaki will take over and talk about existing technologies, solutions, and summary. Now let's begin. The first topic is background. First of all, have you ever heard of this analogy called <laughs> pets versus cattle? This analogy is useful to understand how infrastructure management has changed until today. So you might have heard it somewhere. By the way, the left dog is my boss's dog named Dorop. And the right picture was taken by Masaki. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <After. laughs> uh, pets is described as a service model or pre virtualization like on premises. On the other hand, <clears throat> cattle is described as a service model or post virtualization. I explain the details of the pets and the cattle. Pets is a service model or pre virtualization, and this approach in the visual is important. Some of you may have dogs, cats, or something in your home. You give your pets special name, feeding, and care. When they get sick, you give thorough treatment until they are cured completely. This shows our idea of pets. Let's see how to manage services in this analogy. Services are carefully maintained as it could not be replaced. Your nickname is assigned, and when application or server fails, recover in a significant time and effort. And the causes of failure are investigated to prevent recurrence. That's the idea of pets. And I will explain the cattle. Cattle is a service model or post virtualization And this approach group is important. Although there may be few people in this room having cattle, you do not give your cattle special name, feeding, and care. You give uniform quality feeding and care. When they get sick, the affected individuals are removed. This shows an idea of cattle. When they get sick, Oh, sorry. <laughs> Let's see the how to manage services in this analogy. 
services are equally maintained as it can be replaced in time. Random name is assigned. When application or server fails, the affected server is quickly discarded without recovering and replace new ones for subcontinuity. This is a cattle analogy. We've compared the idea of pets with cattle until now. In recent cloud native source management, we put emphasis on service availability. So an application or server is replaced or discarded with a new one if it fails. For example, last year in Japan, many chickens were dispersed because of butterfly pandemic in poultry farm. The cause of that was investigated and revealed that highly pathogenic policies were transmitted from wild birds to chicken. After the investigation, many chickens were dispersed to prevent from expanding the infection. Originally, it started with one chicken, but the distribution was decided through leaving that one firstly to investigate in detail. In other words, it is important to investigate the individual when the problem occurred, especially when the problem often reoccurs or spreads. And the importance of investigating causes of problems is also applied to Kubernetes, not later. However, there are issues of fade over, which is an obstacle for investigating the causes. In the next slide, I will explain the fade over issues of investigating the causes. So let's see the issues. I will explain the fail over issue of pod with volumes. First of all, fail over is a function to switch to a back system, backup system when application or server fails. It helps to improve availability and reliability. In Kubernetes, ports are also automa automatically fail over. However, we needed to be careful the port is stateful, especially when the port has volumes whose data may be corrupted due to concurrent light. I will explain the example with a diagram. Let's assume our environment that has one control plane and two nodes node 0 and node 1. On node 0, one pod with PV is running. If node 0 fails and really stops, the ideal fade over is that pod moves from node 0 to node 1. On the other hand, in a distributed system, it is not always possible to assume that the state of the nodes is properly recognized. Thus, even if node 0 appears to be stopped from the controlled plane's recognition, for some reason, node 0 may actually be running. In this case, both node 0 and node 1 ports will write to the PB. As a result, <coughs> data may be corrupted due to concurrent light. To prevent this problem from happening in Kubernetes, 
version 1.23 and earlier, there is no other way to fade over than deleting a node. These are fade over issues for parts with volume on Kubernetes. Next, I will explain, explain the details of fade over by node deletion that I mentioned. In Kubernetes version 1.23 and earlier, to guarantee that there is no right to PV, part is fed over after node is deleted. Let's see the flows or fed over with deleting nodes. Firstly, admin detects the node zero failures. Secondly, admin deletes node zero. And then we can guarantee that there are no PV lights because node zero has already been deleted. Finally, when scheduler on Kubernetes recognize node zero is deleted, part with the PV which was running on node zero will be restarted on node one. And because PV is written by single port, the port can be fed over with no constraints or concurrent light. The pros of this method is that availability and reliability can be granted quickly. On the other hand, the cons, it is also related to the machine health check, which will be explain later is that <coughs> node zero node, node data is like metadata on statistics which cannot be retrieved from application is deleted and it is difficult to determine the cause of failure Now, let's talk about what kind of fade over is better and what is ideal. To solve the issues that we discussed so far, there are two requirements for the ideal fade over or part with volumes. Firstly, fade over is done. And secondary, node is not deleted. These are the goals to keep the data necessary to investigate the causes. Next, let's see the ideal flow survey over. First, when detecting the node zero, node zero feeders, Second, fencing the node without deleting the node. Fencing, the new word I explained later. Third, pot which was running on node zero is fed over to node one. As a result, node is not deleted and investigating the cause of failure can be done. <coughs> This is an idea of fade over or, or part with volume. So I talk about fencing in detail. I explain the definition and purpose of fencing. The definition is to isolate the fade node from the cluster. And the purpose is to prevent unintentional access to shared resources to ensure data integrity. Fencing can be achieved in other ways than deleting nodes. For example, I introduced two approaches of fencing. 
Oh, sorry. First one is approach of stopping the node itself. One of the approaches is to power off nodes to prevent the node from issuing I.O. This is called power fencing. Underrating node is also included in this approach. And second one is approach to private access to a shared resource. I introduced SCSI 3 persistent reservations and switch configuration change. The former is to buy persistent reservation instruction or SCSI protocol limit which nodes can issue I.O. to a particular disk. The latter is to switch configuration change, uh, sorry, to private routing from specific nodes to storage. Of course, there are other methods of fencing and you can choose the fencing method suits your purpose and requirement. In the next chapter, Masaki will describe the current fate of the technologies implemented in Kubernetes. As existing technologies, I will explain machine health check MHC and non graceful shutdown. Machine health check MHC keeps checking the health of nodes and delays unhealthy nodes. MHC is handled by machine health check operator. Let's see the detailed behavior step by step. First, machine health check operator keeps checking the health of nodes and deletes failure, detect failure of nodes. <coughs> Second, the operator requests to delete node zero via Cloud API and the node is deleted. After the node is deleted, the operator deletes the node, node resource on the Kubernetes API. Finally, once Kubernetes scheduler detects that node zero is deleted, it can guarantee that there is no volume access from the pod on node zero. So the scheduler decides to fail over the pod. As explained earlier, if nodes are deleted automatically, pod with volume can fail over after nodes are deleted. On the other hand, because nodes are deleted, information that is required to investigate the cause of a failure can be obtained from the node. Next existing technology is non graceful shutdown. non graceful shutdown is a feature to allow failover of pot with volumes without node deletion. It became stable in Kubernetes 1.28. A summary of its mechanism is that once administrators or tools complete the fencing a node and add a special time to the node, Kubernetes scheduler regards that there's no risk of data corruption and starts failover of the pod. Let's see the detailed behavior step by step. First, an admin or tool detects a failure of node and fences node zero, for example, 
by powering off the node zero. Second, once the admin or tool ensures that the node is fenced, it adds a special taint to the node. The taint which is very wrong is node.kubernetes.io slash out of service equals node shutdown colon no execute. The taint is used to tell the Kubernetes scheduler that the node is surely fenced or that there is no right access to any volumes from, the, from any pods on the node. Finally, once Kubernetes scheduler detects that the taint is added to the node, it decides to fail over the pod to another node. In this way, we can achieve failover of pods with volumes without node deletion. The advantage of the, this feature is that because failed node isn't deleted, information for investigation isn't deleted. On the other hand, the disadvantage of this feature is that no standard mechanism of automation for fencing and adding the taint is provided. So it requires time for failure and cost for operation. Let's move on to solutions. Before explaining solutions, let's look back at the goal again. The goal is to achieve both failure is done and node is not deleted. In this way, we aim to keep the data necessary to investigate the cause. To achieve the goal, we utilize the external remediation feature of MHC. External remediation is a feature to change remediation process of MHC to any desired logics. By using this feature, we will automate the fencing and adding the taint to shorten the time to fade over and improve investigations of a failure. I will explain external remediation feature itself first. In external remediation, we need two additional components, remediation CR and external remediation operator, which works together. Let's see the detailed behavior step by step. First, machine health check operator detects failure of node zero. This behavior is the same as the existing logic. Second, instead of in deleting node zero here, machine health check operator creates a remediation CR. This CR has all the information required for the external remediation operator to do its remediation process. Finally, external remediation operator keeps checking the remediation CR. Once it, de it detects that the CR is created, it executes the remediation logics for the node. The remediation logics are up to the developer of external remediation operator, so any logics can be executed. We will utilize this feature to automate the fencing and adding the taint to shorten the time to fail over and improve investigation of a failure. So uh, I will first explain a case that remediation logics are powering of the node and adding the taint. Remediation steps consist of three steps that were described as 3-1 to 3-3. Let's see the detailed behavior step by step. Step one and step two are the same as explained. Machine health check operator detects the failure of node zero and creates remediation CR. As remediation logics, external remediation operator first requests to 
part of node zero to a cloud API. Second, after the part of succeed, the operator adds a special taint of non graceful shutdown to the node zero. Finally, Kubernetes scheduler detects that the taint is added to the node, it starts to fail over the pot to another node. As a fencing, powering off the node is done automatically, safe failure over is achieved. Also, node is stopped instead of deleted, so we can avoid deletion of data on the node that is required to investigate the failure. As a result, we can achieve both failure over is done and node is not deleted. We at least achieved the original goal now. However, status of memory is lost when node is powered off because system memory is volatile. So from the viewpoint of improving investigation, we still have a room for improvement. Let's consider a further improvement. To solve an issue of the status of memory is lost, we already have a matured technology called KDAMP. KDAMP is a feature of Linux kernel to write out the status of memory to a disk for future investigation. We can request to take a KDAMP by using non merciful interrupt NMI, then the status of memory can be written out to a disk. The data retain the status of the failure on the failure, so we utilize it for future investigation. As described in the table, NMI can be injected externally because each platform like bare metal virtual environment and cloud vendors provide CLI, web UI, or API for it. From a fencing viewpoint, there is one more important thing to be mentioned. After started to take KDAMP, writing to disk is restricted to only to a dump disk. Fence KDAMP is a feature to fence by detecting the start of taking KDAMP. It fences by utilizing the fact that after started to take KDAMP, writing to disk is restricted only to a dump disk. On the other hand, there is a lag between successful completion of KDAMP and KDAMP request and actual start of KDAMP. So we are not sure whether KDAMP is started just by successful completion of KDAMP request. Fetz KDAMP fences nodes by detecting the start of KDAMP. Let's see the detailed behavior step by step. First, an admin requests to take KDAMP and OS starts to take KDAMP. Second, once taking KDAMP is started, Fence KDAMP send is executed on the OS and a special packet to notify the start of KDAMP is sent. The destination of the packet is configured in advance by specifying the host name or IP address of the host that Fence KDAMP listener is running on. Finally, once Fence KDAMP listener receives the notific notification packet, it detects that the fence is complete. In this way, we can separately handle the request to taking KDAMP and detection of start of the taking KDAMP. Fence can be achieved by using KDAMP. We can combine 
these features to make remediation logics to be fencing with fence k dump and adding the taint. Let's assume that k dump and fence k dump send are already configured on the node and the external remediation operator is implemented to handle the fence k dump packet to detect the start of k dump. Let's see the detailed behavior step by step. First, machine health check operator detects failure of node zero and creates a remediation seal in the same way. Remediation step consists of five steps that were described as 3 1 to 3 5. First, external remediation operator requests to take the K dump by sending your NMI to OS via Cloud API. Second, OS to take K dump. Third, fence K dump send notifies that taking K dump is started. Fourth, once external remediation operator receives a notification, it detects that fencing is completed. So it adds taint to the node. Finally, Kubernetes scheduler detects that the taint is added, so it starts port failover. In this way, port failover over is safely achieved with keeping the node itself and the status of the memory. As a result, more detailed information for investigation of a failure can be obtained. In summary, as a background, we've explained a famous analogy of pet versus cattle. And even in cattle or a crowd native world, investigation of a failure are important. As a specific issue of Kubernetes for the background, we've introduced the dilemma of failover and investigation. On Kubernetes node failure, it's hard to achieve both shortening the time to failover and improving investigation of failure. It is because to avoid dead corruption, fencing of failed node is required. On the other hand, existing technology only allowed to choose either of automatically fail over but not good for investigation, or good for investigation, but not automatically fail over The existing technologies are MSC that provide automatic fencing by the rating node and non-graceful shutdown that provides manual fencing without the rating nodes. As solutions, we introduce by utilizing the external remediation feature of MHC, the remediation process of non-graceful shutdown can be automated. As fencing methods, power fencing and fence KDAMP can be used and rather one is better for investigation. That's all for our presentation. Thank you for your attention and any questions? Can you show the slide 4-5? Four yeah. Five. No, 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 4-5, okay. yeah, that's one. Yeah. You say that the, the worker node has a failure. You yep. have some mechanism to fail over and, you know, graceful shutdown or something like that. But yep. what happened to the control plane's node has, has a failure? Is the same, same behavior going to happen? Uh, actually, uh, control plane should be uh, configured to be redundant. And uh, so control plane itself works uh, Work, uh, sorry, so your question is... So what happened, error, all, has, hap, error has happened on control plane server. 
or Contrapreneur yeah. Road itself. That same fail over something gonna happen? Yeah. That's my question. Okay, uh, so, yeah, you, you can choose either of them uh, to configure to be the same behavior or uh, exclude the controller plane to be not to be fenced. Oh, okay. So that that's user the choice. Choice, yeah. You have to select which option you're gonna take. Yeah, and I think there should be no problem to fence controller plane if the control plane control is plane has a failure. Yeah. It failed over to another node to just like that you described in the, in your presentation. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, so the uh, control plane uh, port is already uh, redundant. redundant, so it should not. Uh, it doesn't need to be a uh, failover in this sense. But yeah, you can okay. configure. All right. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. So as you like. Yeah. Ah, thank you very much for uh, your presentation. Uh, my name is Akihiro Hasego. Uh, could you tell me the example for uh, using KDAMP? Uh, you, you mentioned uh, you, want to, you want to have a, you want to do investigation. I'd like to, I'd like to have some example. What uh, did, you, did you know using KDAMP? Okay, so you mean which kind of investigations? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because we yeah. also using the such kind of system. So uh, sometimes we have uh, also similar station. So KDAMP is very useful or not? I, I would like to know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, what kind of uh, <laughs> problem? Yeah, actually, uh, examples are uh, so kernel bugs uh -huh. that should be. Uh, only be investigated from the uh, is it yeah. sometime or not uh, so uh, it depends <laughs> on your <laughs> yeah uh, you, uh, environment you, uh, learning the pod uh, learning the content hours also yeah it it happens and uh -huh. I'm not sure the frequency oh, really? uh, yeah it, it depends on your uh, your environment or mm -hmm. your workload Any other questions? I think there's no questions, so thank you very much.